Hi my beautiful muses, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, while I have your attention, pop down below, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you can keep up with all of my postings. At this time, I'm posting about twice a week. So I'm trying to keep it up there twice a week, eventually to three times, we'll see how it goes. But today we're pitching the big question, what is cruelty free? What does cruelty free mean? It means something different I have found across the board. Um, across consumers. It means something different. Um, some people even still contend that cruelty-free does not have an official definition, and that is not true. Merriam-Webster has actually defined cruelty-free. Cruelty-free is cosmetics developed or produced without inhumane testing on animals. Okay, so some people say there's still no definition for cruelty-free. That is inaccurate. Some people try to expand on the cruelty-free um, definition by saying that, well, it's technically not cruelty-free because we don't know the labor behind, um, the labor being used behind the production of a product, a, a cosmetic. And for this video, cosmetic, my term is meaning skincare and makeup. So when I use cosmetic, that's what I'm referring to. Um, they sometimes think that the definition must encompass ethics, and that's not necessarily true. The Merriam-Webster uh, actual dictionary definition does not include anything else but the statement that a product is made without inhumane treatment of animals. So that is the definition of cruelty-free. While I have you, if you could pop down below, write in the comments if you think that the definition should be expanded. If you think cruelty-free should be a term used to cover more um, human rights, etc., cetera, um, put that down below and tell me what you always thought cruelty-free meant if you had a different definition. There's no judgment here. I'm really interested to hear. I'm here to hear from my, um, I love to hear from my muses. So please put your comment down below. I'd love to read them and see what other people thought about cruelty-free. Um, another misconception, um, people think that the cosmetic industry must be the only people doing animal testing. That is wholly inaccurate. Um, animal testing is used for medical, pharmaceutical testing, and for cosmetics. Cosmetics, um, it accounts for about 10 to 15% of inhumane animal testing annually. That's about 200,000 animals annually. My goal with this channel, and hopefully with you as well, is that we get down to zero. We don't have any animals to test. We don't need to test animals. Just for an image here, let's pop over. Let's look at this. Would you want to be treated like this? Would you want to feel like this? This poor bunny has gone through some serious mess for the cosmetic industry, for nothing. Would you want to look like that? That human down there? No, we don't want to look like that. So let's think about the animals. Let's get that 10 to 15% down to zero. Another misconception is that testing um, is required, and that is not true. That is not true at all. Testing is not required in the United States. The FDA does not require any animal testing whatsoever for cosmetics in the United States. The only government that I know of right now that actively requires um, cosmetics, imported cosmetics and cosmetic ingredients to be tested is the Chinese government. And there's a lot of people battling that right now, which is fantastic and that may eventually be overturned. But right now it is the, the Chinese government that is requiring all cosmetic products that are imported to be tested. So there's still active um, testing going on. They're not the only ones, it's just the largest consumer of those products. Uh, I'm sure there are smaller countries, I believe I read that there were some smaller countries that were um, still involved in the animal testing. Um, so let's, let's hope and let's, let's do our part to go cruelty free and show the cosmetic industry that we're not interested in that anymore. We're not, we're not interested in animals being tested for beauty. No need, absolutely no need. Some other interesting facts here. Um, 
people actually think that animals are being tested for human safety. They, they feel that it's needed. Not, not that, you know, that wasn't the principle of it before. Um, it's that somehow it's still needed for, for human safe, safety. And that is simply not true. Let's take a look at this photo here that I'm inserting here. You'll see there's laboratory work going on here. And there's a whole cycle of modeling going on here. So let me explain that to you. In the past, the ingredients that are found in cosmetics were tested on animals. I, I have no way of changing that for you. That is a fact and it's a fact we have to accept. In the past, that happened and inhumanely at that, okay? But in doing so, they created this master formulary list of ingredients and how humans react to them based on these animal studies. Now, every human's different. So that's why some um, may have a reaction to a certain mascara and some others may not. We're all individuals, but this formulary list, the most common reactions and the chances of having certain reactions. So we can also run mathematical models using this kind of formula, formulary. We can actually run models to see if we use a combination of this, we use a combination of that, dash of this, a dash of that, what are the chances that someone's gonna have a reaction to it? So our technology has moved so far along, we don't need animal testing any longer. We do not need animal testing. If we need to test a cosmetic product, we have plenty of options to go in a Petri dish we have leftover plastic surgery tissue. Okay, so all that fat and skin, don't mean to gross you out, but all of that can be used for testing. And that is actually what is taking place now in most cases in the United States. Also, we have um, donor tissue. So sometimes people can, can donate tissue to medical research and that can also be for cosmetic research. So we have other ways of finding out if ingredients are gonna cause any sort of reaction. So inhumane testing of animals and something being cruelty free does not mean it was not tested on an animal at some point in the past. And it doesn't mean that we have to use an animal now because we have the benefits of so much scientific technology. It is completely unnecessary. And the final, final point I wanna make about cruelty-free is that just because a label says that an ingredient or a product is cruelty-free, never tested on animals or not tested on animals, does not mean that is in fact true. So historically, when we say never tested on animals, that's actually inaccurate. Because to create this master formulary, like I spoke of earlier, they've tested at some point in history. So that's not true. That's spitting the truth a little bit. Um, cruelty free, companies can slap that on there. There's no penalties from actually putting that on there. Um, so anyone can put cruelty free on there. Um, and not tested on animals, that also can be a little bit stretched, a little bit of a stretching of truth here. Um, not tested on animals means, okay, maybe that final product was not. So if it was a facial cream, maybe the facial cream was not tested on animals, but maybe the ingredients were, but the final product was not. So there's a little bit of bending of language here. I implore you to seek out the Leaping Bunny logo on the back of your cosmetic, even your household products. I implore you to look out for that Leaping Bunny logo. This is the Leaping Bunny logo. 
and here's why. You can get more in detail online, um, but I will tell you that their regulations to get the logo is very stringent. The regulations require a lot of uh, reporting, a lot of exchanges, a lot of uh, scientific backing. There, there's a lot involved with getting a Leaping Buddy logo on your product. So I would safely say if you see this Leaping Bunny logo on the back of a product that you're using, you're safe, you're good. You're actually using something that is cruelty free, that actively is cruelty free. I strongly encourage you to do that. Uh, look out for the Leaping Bunny logo. There are many regulations that a company has to um, prove that they have followed and um, actually give data supporting it and signatures, all sorts of stuff to become a Leaping Bunny participant. So if you go to the Leaping Bunny website, um, which I encourage you to do, the link is down below, take a look, look at the requirements. And also they have a shopping guide, a great shopping guide. They have an app that you can download so that you can take it with you whenever you go shopping. So you just punch in that product or that company and you will find out if it is Leaping Bunny certified or not. I strongly, strongly encourage you to do that. I am in no way sponsored or paid by Le Leaping Bunny. I just want you to know that is what I do. It is what practice I follow and I, I practice that because I've actively researched it. So I hope that helps you with your definition of cruelty free. I hope that gives you an idea of some of the myths that you've heard. Um, and please comment down below if you think that I have left anything out or you have questions. Um, or if you think that we should expand on what cruelty free really means in the cosmetic industry, feel free to pitch that in there too. I read all of your comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that helped you. I hope that helped you make better shopping choices and I hope to see you next time. Love you so much. My baby muses. Mwah. Bye.